You're watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. This is a special edition, and it's kind of breaking news we have here today. Uh, my first guest is a neurosurgeon, spine surgeon, well-known all over the world, and uh, we're talking about the end of back pain, possibly, and neck pain. Uh, it, it, it may or may not be an overstatement to say that, but with us, we have an expert on the topic. Uh, we've had him on the program before. I've also had him on the Randy Alvarez podcast for a long version. Very interesting. And, uh, you know, this is a real interview. I'm just asking the questions. I'm not, I'm not endorsing him today, but I think, look, if you've got back pain, neck pain, you've got to hear what he has to say. And especially if you've been told you need a fusion surgery, because there's a, a, apparently more than 500,000 or even a million of these surgeries being done with opening up your back, huge downtime, huge recovery, and now with small incisions, not tearing apart the muscles or the tissues, he's able to do it, in some cases, in about a half an hour. So with us, we have Dr. Hamid Abbasi. Dr. Abbasi, welcome to the program. Welcome back. Always a pleasure to be here in beautiful Cars Park, Randy. Now, you, you know, it, it, you have your cell phone on the desk. We may get a surprise call because I said, well, what are the people? Because what takes other guys seven hours to do, mm -hmm. let's say a fusion surgery, you're doing in 45 minutes or under 30 minutes and uh, even complex scoliosis mm -hmm. surgeries. And I said, I mean, these people that work in the ORs, the operating rooms, they must be surprised. You said, I'm going to have a guy call. You ask him yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's a team, truly a teamwork. No, no captain in any ship can... Uh, navigate all by himself you have to put a good team together and in places we have been we have that good teams together and that team helps me to deliver this kind of care at the level that is unheard of and uh, for the spine surgery and the result or patient that uh, benefit from the surgery without uh, go going through the downside of the surgery which is like being intubated for s five six seven hours and uh, that teamwork um, is extremely important. But so I called my OR today and I said, the person who is usually scrubbing with me, and he's a very uh, you know, competent person. Now the scrub tech, just so scrub we Scrub tech, yeah. So these are, the, these are not medical doctors, but these no. are the people, what do they do? What's their role? Because we've all seen the medical shows in surgery. Yeah. What's a scrub tech? Well, he's like a first mate in the, on a ship. He the truly, runs the show um, where the surgeon is concentrating and performing the surgery. He needs lots of help, instruments uh, that the, uh, the scrub tech put the right instrument together in an order that uh, for that us to them. perform the surgery properly. And the reason I want to talk to him because you said he, because there's two, we're talking about fusion surgery today, right? Mm -hmm. It's a new type of uh, fusion surgery. There are only 30 guys as of today's date Around, yes. Around 30 in the world. Is that fair to say? In the yeah, world? Yeah, it is fair to that say. That are able to do it this way. Yeah. And you said that this guy that we that may call in, that he witnesses other six, seven hour surgeries. Yes. And then he sees yours for the first time. And, and what do they say? Like they go, what? He says that's his favorite kind of surgery. He understand that this is a you know a highly specialized kind of no, surgery. No, but when he first saw your surgery, mm -hmm. under forty minutes or so, as opposed to seven hours. Well, he was truly speechless, I believe, because he didn't tell me anything the first. But uh, now that we grow uh, more like friends, he tells me that his favorite surgery, and he doesn't want to be in any other kind of spine surgery. But uh, I I think. Uh, it takes a little to sit in that the surgery, that the way we do it, um, uh, what it really does to the patient. And you know, all the blood that you don't lose, all the time you don't have to cook the tissue to stop the bleeding. And he understands that the elegance of the surgery itself, it's a, there's a beauty of doing things simple and efficient. And that is where we are. We do it uh, very efficiently. So people know what we're talking about. Okay, so spinal fusion surgery. Right, lots of hardware. You fuse the spine, and and just correct me if I'm wrong. So people know right exactly what we're talking about. Typical surgery: you got to open, cut them open, cut open hundreds of muscles, mm -hmm. 100 plus muscles, 
that never get deta attached again, like a, the girdle that holds your whole body together. Mm -hmm. You cut those muscles just so you can have access so the surgeon could see and, and place the hardware and fuse the spine. Then they, and it takes seven hours because you've got to meticulously mm -hmm. or in a sloppy way, you've got to <laughs> detach all these muscles, then you've got to put them all back together. You have to control bleeding, as mm -hmm. you say. Yeah. So it takes like seven hours, very risky surgery. Mm -hmm. In fact, if you're like 60, 70 pounds overweight, you can't even get the surgery. Then there's another way to do it, yeah. and which is the way you're doing it. You know, I, you, I couldn't describe it better. In a regular surgery, you know, anatomically, we call them paraspinal muscle. We give them one name, or we call them multifidus muscle. We love giving them based on their function names, okay. but in truth, each of those muscles, they are they, they, hundreds of individual they have muscles. They a function. They connect to different areas, different uh, you know bone area, and they have a different function. We put a knife down and cut them and separate them from their uh, point of origin, like no different than if imagine uh, the orthopedic surgeon would cu cut up op your open your shoulder, but cut all the muscles. And but that is a part of that we have been doing it for a long time. But something that we don't say often. In a spine surgery, we do not reattach a single muscle back. You don't. So these people, no. they float and eventually they turn into a scar and die. Okay. This and this, even though we give them few names, in reality, as you said, there are hundreds of individual muscles that each have their function. There is a reason for them to be there. We render them useless. So when you do it today, right? You're going in through what six, eight holes? How many? How many little holes? Well, depending on how many levels we do the surgery, and uh, and one of that's one of the things that I tell my patient that it's not about how many holes we use; it's about what we achieve and what happens after. Like six or eight? Is that what we're looking at? If we do it like a, the, the, I just did a, the multiple of these kind of complex surgeries where we did a three level fusion for three level fusion. I use usually one small incision to get to the bad disc, but then each screw individually has its own hole, so eight screw, uh, holes for the screws to put the screws in place to stabilize. But the idea is, and uh, I showed you a picture of that after the surgery, once we are done, and once we take our devices out, because we don't cut the muscle, we just dilate them and they fall back, Practically, practically, that area is scarless. There is no scarring or damaging to the tissue. Once, um, one of the ways I have been able to really impress my colleagues is actually when I bring them to our cadaver labs. Once we do the surgery, we take the tissue layer by layer off on a, our uh, porcine lab, which is a pig model, or our cadaver lab. We truly take them uh, the layer by layer. We take the tissue off and we show them. What structure did we go through to get the job done? It is hard to see even uh, what is the path of the instrument we take because once they fall back, they peel themselves very beautifully and uh, in that area, people heal scarless. Inside, okay. the muscles just turn back to their function right so, away. So, as in, so I guess there's one way to access the spine for yes. the fusion, to cut everything out of the way, make room for it, Fillet a patient open. Fillet them open, as you say. Yes. Or to go in, I guess, are you doing it under fluoroscopy or some sort of? Yes. Okay. Yes. To yes. go in, like using some sort of tools, right? Yes. Very I mean, specialized tools. You have to have the hand eye, the specialized tools, to go in and actually just kind of push things out of the way instead of cutting them out of the way. Is that, is that kind you of what's going on? You just described it. What I well, do you is... taught me a little bit about it. Yeah. I want to make sure that I understand it. So you just, so you have a way to just kind of push things out of the way. Yes. Get done, get in and get out. Yeah. And that's it's it. about instrumentation. It's about very specialized instrument that enable you what would be impossible even 10 years ago. It's about um, no different than the watch you have in your hand. It's magic what that watch does. But all what it is is an instrument that designed very specifically at highest level to do certain things for you. Like you just told me that that measures the oxygen level yeah, in the your blood. Yeah, the watch, yeah. That would have been the device that we had 10 years ago to do that would have been the, the, the almost filling this table. Yeah. And now it is on your wrist. So what the, we are trying to do to take a complex, complex task and make it easier based on what the instrument provide to us. Like 
um, you drive your uh, automatic car and you yeah. don't think about gearing, sure, changing uh, the gear and you know paying attention to at what speed we I used to I used to do that have to pay attention that at yeah, the right you, uh, speed the clutch the stick shift now have, now most people drive automatics we don't do that anymore because the machine the instrument took care of that for us so we can concentrate on the road and this is what we have been doing with very specialized instrument make them so specialized so much more efficient that it's like automatic it's like we make it automatic so um, it, and that be making it automatic it reflects in our efficiency to be able to do this kind of surgery. Okay. Now we should mention uh, how many how many sp spine fusion surgeries are done a year? In approximately. In the United States, more than a million spine surgeries are done a year. Half of them, more than five hundred thousand of them, are actually spinal fusions. So five hundred thousand spinal surgeon surgeries every year. Okay. Yes. Of those, in your opinion, and those are all done open, seven hours at the table, losing a half a gallon of blood, complications, deaths, things like that. How many of those do you think could have been done this new minimally invasive way? Depending on the level of the training of a surgeon. I mean, um, I, when I started that, I started with doing only 20% of my surgeries this way because my level of experience wasn't okay. adequate enough. Now I do more than 95% of my surgery spinal fusions with this technique because as the time goes on, uh, my repertoire of my um, skills and knowledge that I can uh, draw on has grown to a point that I can do scoliosis with the significant side bending of the spine or things that are more complex this way. So okay. it's all depending on the level of your expertise. I told you on my podcast that I interviewed a, a doctor, another spine surgeon that knows you, called you a mad genius, mm -hmm. but he also said you were the fastest in the world at this procedure. Mm -hmm. And I tried to put you on the spot in my mm -hmm. green room. I said, are you the fastest in the world? I call it efficient. Mm -hmm. I said, but are you faster than anybody else doing this? <laughs> well, I call it efficient. <laughs> but the truth is you are faster than anybody else right now doing this. I mean, your record right now is what, about 36 minutes? Well, actually, for one level, uh, we uh, we don't officially keep record. Okay. Though um, I have been do. told, no, I actually okay. I don't. Okay. I, we have a database. We gather all of our data, but uh, this is the truth that we know everything about this. This is why we are good at. We keep track, and we keep track to not only the time spent on the surgery, blood loss, all everything to the finest, uh, the, the minute details of the surgery. We could, uh, we keep track, we go analyze it and we get better at that. Uh, we have done this surgery in 22 minutes. Wow. Now, this is something on the side that I just got aware of that, that uh, the staff in the OR actually keep bet about how fast we are going to be in the surgery. Um, what I tell my patient is not about being fast, it's about getting the job done. And that job, uh, for me, uh, I say my patient and my staff, I don't perform surgery. Surgery performs me. Because surgery for me is a time machine. We get in so concentrated. We get in like a, like a, to the zone. Once we get everything is in place, we have a good team, we have a, everything is in the right place. Um, I start the surgery, and then all of a sudden okay. surgery is done. And, uh, but uh, I have been told uh, the, the, uh, and jokingly that staff keep a bet on how fast we how are going to be that day. Now, traditional fusion surgery, the part I don't understand, we're kind of short on time, but they go in through the obliques or they go in through the stomach sometimes? There are multiple. And the back, so they're going through two areas? There are multiple ways of going there, but you know, it's still m more than um, 75, 80% of the surgeries are performed from the back where we fillet you open. You have a picture. Let's go to that picture. I'm looking. What am I looking at here? Yo, yo, you're looking at the, the, the on one side traditional spine surgery where there is a midline incision, meaning in the middle the skin is open. All the muscles are filled actually open, and you are looking at the structure of the spine itself. And uh, on the other side, you are able to see some uh, screws that are poking through the skin. These screws are not cutting the muscle; they are actually dilating the muscles and they are going inside of the spine practically once uh, the top part of that screw comes off the muscles retract they are back where they are and that area is scarless and uh, and you're so look the only reason why people would want to get spine surgery 
or a fusion surgery is because they're in a lot of pain, right? Some of How do you stack up mm -hmm. pain-wise? Do you think you also, not only is it done quicker, safer, mm -hmm. low downtime, et cetera, they could in some cases walk that same day. What's, what's the success rate? Would well, you say it's even better? Yeah, well, the, if the success in medicine is not uh, accumulated in one number. Okay. We have a, a scientific way of measuring the success in the spine. We call it OSVEST 3 for the lower back. We call it neck disability index for, um, for the cervical or neck spine. But uh, more or less, that is, I think, one of the things we do. We gather those data. We, are just, we don't, we don't so do just a dozen. So to answer the question, though, is it it's better a, results? It's peer-reviewed, published data that's out there. Better results. That we have better result in the, around the time of the surgery. We have very, very good result toward the, you know, in the long run. But while our patients are getting from the short to the run, they don't have the complication of the um, open old-fashioned surgery. So not only we achieve better results, we achieve them sooner okay. and safer. All right. Now, let's talk about the pain patient for just a moment. It's very interesting, your take on it. And I even said, how did you develop this empathy? Because you come from a family of pain and you've been in pain before. But you say that unknowingly, the spine surgeons, because they're doing the surgery, they don't know what their life is at home, what their, the rest of their life is going to be like but unknowingly kind of ruining their lives. I think you said close to what I'm just saying now. So the typical fusion surgery can ruin people's lives. Well, Elaborate you, on that. Yeah, you know, um, I, we just watched a testimonial together a few minutes ago, a patient that, you know, is uh, a little overweight, well, uh, and um, it's a BMI is 42, and our society is uh, telling us not to do surgery if your BMI above. Because he's obese. Because it's obese, you have to go through more tissue. You will cause so much damage that in the long run, the risk versus benefit is actually not in patient's favor. And, but that patient has gone 30 years. He says it. He's in pain for 30 years. For 30 years. And in the last three years, he's in such a pain. He's thinking about ending his life. He's a good man. He's a, a provider. He, that's what he said on the, on the video. That's what he says. He said he was told if you do a fusion surgery, I'm paraphrasing him slightly. They told him, you're going to die. That's what they are told. And we, the spine surgeon, um, we go through the training. One of the most important things we do, we manage risk versus benefit. We find out how much our procedure is going to help you, what are the risks associated with that, and when is that threshold that is really not worth to do okay. it for you. So let me get this straight. If there's a million spine surgeries, 500,000 uh, fusions a year, there's probably another 3 million that were turned away. Nothing we can do. Too risky. Because if you're a surgeon, and there's a huge chance there could be major complications, a surgeon doesn't want to touch that patient, I, right? I'm the person who get those patients. I'm the person that uh, those patients go after, they are told no by five other surgeons that, you know, then I'm too risky. Too risky. You're too old. You're too big. You have other, medica other uh, medical problems and, you know, surgery will kill you. That is, uh, that is when they come to me. Let's go to that clip. This guy on the bed just had the procedure a couple of days ago, I guess. Right? Just, just the day before. Just the, no, the, I did the surgery two days ago and patient went home yesterday. Let's go to that clip. You were smiling a minute ago. Yeah. How do you feel? I feel real good. Now, the surgery was just yesterday. You got one of the biggest surgery anybody can get in the spine. Yeah. And uh, we fused multiple of your discs. You had a scoliosis. Mm -hmm. And tell me, how, how were you before the surgery? How long has it been going on? Well, I've uh, had back problems for 30 years. I've had three different minor surgeries plus a spine stimulator. Mm -hmm. And nothing helped. Yeah. Um, yeah. Actually, um, I actually thought about suicide. You know, that's not an option. And I have people dependent on me. So the pain you had in your legs uh, before the surgery, how is it now? Um, good. It's um, gone? I can't feel it right now. Or, have you already walked? Yes. I, I don't feel it unless I move. Okay. And, and, uh, and it's minimal. It's yeah. uh, just those minor surgeries I had. And, and it's you, no comparison. Uh, now, how do you, overall, how do you feel? Yeah. Good. Okay. Spirits are up. Yeah, excellent, excellent. So that's typical. Well, the, what's typical about that is they go over a journey. They, but they are sent around. They are told that, you know, 
you don't need the surgery because surgery is too big for you or you're too big but for the surgery. he was 30 years in pain about. Yes, yes. He I mean, missed out. Look, I don't know how old he is. Let's say in the 60s. Yes, yeah, he's in so his 60s. So from like in his 45, I mean, he missed out some on a lot of good years being in he, pain. He lost a lot of quality years that he could have uh, put to good use for himself, for his family, for society. That, uh, that he, because at the end of the day, we are less productive if we are in pain for every, for ourselves, for our family, and for our environment. Pain patients in medicine sometimes aren't even taken that seriously, right? No, and in a way, um, we sort of, in medical industry, we produce this kind of patient that they go through this path and because the solution for them is too big for our expertise level, we just dismiss them and then we, we in, it, 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 that the narcotic epidemic is our own doing on the medical, uh, on the medical care side because uh, we know that the, what the problem is, but we are just considering it just too big for the patient to have You that. say that there are well-intentioned uh, spine surgeons, that because they're doing it the old-fashioned, open way, cutting all those muscles, that they are ruining the lives of these patients. You and, believe that? Well, because they're not knowingly doing it. No. But you think it ruins people's lives to get a traditional spine surgery. Randy, How could I you could that? speak hours about that, and you know, this is a very complex uh, topic. Discussion, this, yeah. These people, these surgeons, are well-trained, good-intentioned people. They go, they dedicate their lives to take care of the pa these patients, and uh, but uh, but but they come back to the point that, first of all, this risk of the surgery are too high. So I'm going to wait four years before even I touch you. By the time I start even considering surgery is the last resort for a good reason. And okay. higher the risk of the surgery is, the longer I'm going to wait before I put you through that surgery. And what that means for that patient, their, their marriage breaks down, their lives are destroyed, they lose their job because they cannot show up to work. So what do you mean I marriage is destroyed? Well, you, you know, I said get often patient where the Wife comes back and uh, comes and tells me, you know, either you fix him or you take him home. I don't want him. Because nobody wants to be around a miserable person. And these people are miserable, often. That's too bad. Yeah. And uh, these people, they uh, lose their job. They lose their, uh, you know, uh, relationships. They get into alcohol and drugs because it is hard to be in pain. These are good people. Very many of them, they have a professional life. And then what, uh, once... They are at the end of the rope. If they are lucky, we are willing to give them the last resort, which is the open old-fashioned surgery. But by time, see, the longer you put it off, because you're on all these medications, you have no activity in your life. You're a couch potato. You're deconditioned. That the word you're deconditioned. Yes. And so by the time they get to you, you uh, uh, is your thing like I wish I could meet them ten years earlier. Yes. Really. And, and that, but uh, I wish I would have met them ten years earlier. Put, uh, have put them through our process, which is not only surgery. Okay. We have extensive multidisciplinary path to put them through, and but we can figure out these days who's going to benefit from that, and then we, they don't need surgery. As a matter of fact, we, most of our patients, we send for other treatment beyond surgery, but once it's clear that the other things are not going to help them and they need the surgery, we put them through that process before the, the condition, the heart and lung okay. uh, they run down and, they, they, and we give them years of life back that they can spend for better things. Now, in the OR, you tell a story that you told it to me a, a few minutes ago that there was an anesthesiologist mm -hmm. who is involved in these seven, six, seven hour surgeries, you know, the traditional open fusion surgery. He saw your surgery. Mm -hmm. What did he, and, and what did he say? Well, this was a place that I you just... You said, I'm closing. Yeah, yeah. It, this was a place that, you know, I just start at the, in the university. I start doing this surgery. And uh, it was a the, the, the two-level fusion. And 45 minutes into the surgery, I'm telling, as I should, that to prepare the team for the what's coming next, that we are closing. Closing in, means you're going to... 
meaning that we are done with the major part of the surgery. We are going to close the stitch, or close the okay. skin, and then prepare the patient to be waken up. And in that moment, the head of the anesthesiologist came uh, above that wall that we have between the surgery and the anesthesiology, and he's looking me in the eyes and say, are you joking? And I said, no, I am, we are closing. And, uh, and this is something that ju they're just not used to. Uh, with their uh, open old-fashioned surgery. And again, this is not a, it has nothing to do with this specific surgeon. It's about different mode of surgery, like... The technique's different. Yeah. You told me on the couch, it's very interesting, <laughs> you go, Randy, I don't want to make this about me, the Abbasi yeah. method, and sure, you've done and more than just not. about anybody else, you're faster than anybody else, more efficient than anybody else, but you made it clear, this is not about me. Yeah. I just want people, and I'm paraphrasing slightly, but you want people to know their options, that yes. there's a better way. But more importantly, you want other surgeons to look at this closer. They, they have to. This is unethical from us, knowing that we can do better for our patient and not to do it. Good. You know, there's no crystal ball to know the impact you had on these people's lives. Mm -hmm. And maybe someday in an afterlife, you get to see all these people saying, <laughs> you know, this is where my life was going and this is where I ended up. Anyway, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Well, it's such a pleasure things. to be here. I want to let people know that there, we, you know, this is a 30 minute interview. But the, we went long. So if you go to our website at wellnesshour.com or his website, probably better to go to his website, you could see the long version of this. This is a big topic. Uh, also on the Randy Albers podcast, I've got a, like an hour and 20 minute interview with you. But this, to me, for some reason, it's a big deal because it is kind of breaking news that and, we have today. Well, it was such a pleasure to be here. And I tell to everybody I talk to, this should be personal, because it is personal. It, it, by the time you're 70 years old, it's almost impossible not to have spine problem. And uh, you just have to look into your neighbors, families, parents, to see somebody who's suffering with the spine problem. So it is personal, in a way. Do you, are, do you live with a sense of frustration, like that everybody isn't jumping at this? I, th I, I live with a sense of, uh, I, with a sense of, that uh, I'm achieving something okay. Im of importance. And all important things are worth to go, struggle. to go through the struggle. If you don't have to struggle for it, uh, okay. it, maybe it's not that important. Good. I want to thank you for coming to the show. Good stuff. Thank you very much for thank uh, you, having Dr. me. Buzz. You've been watching the Wellness Hour news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez for now. I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez the authority on health issues.